video is brought to you by Mads Panda. For all your crazy panda needs, check the link in the description below. Hello and welcome back to another video. A while back I was talking to Mads Panda and he told me about these little chip things here that you can find, if I can get it out of the bag, on Amazon and eBay and uh, you know what? We don't need the bag anymore. Everything is stuck to it anyway. These little things right here. And if you read the title, you probably know what this is. It's just a little chip and some extra parts so you can control the chip. And it has a little volume here. And it's a reverb delay sort of thing. And today we're going to put it in to a pedal. Now, because of him, that's why I'm dressed as a panda. Because that's, you know, on topic. But I'm gonna take these off because I don't need them anymore. And whoo, it's warm. Whew. If you don't have one of these onesies and you feel like you need something to keep you warm in the winter, get one of these because it doesn't matter how cold it is, you will be dying. Whew, it's so warm. Yeah, because of him and because he told me about these, we're gonna we're gonna be using them for this video, and I'm dedicating it to him as a sort of thank you for, you know telling me about this because I've already been experimenting a little bit with one and it's actually a lot of fun and it's super easy to make a pedal and if you look online for one of these obviously chipping is going to be different depending on where you live and things like that but it's about three four dollars for one of these and I actually bought ten for about twenty so we can have a lot of fun now I'm gonna put two of these into one pedal and make a weird, crazy thing where I have uh, two of these in one. And I'm gonna show you how to do it. I'm gonna show you what I think you should do with it, which is basically this pedal that I'm building now. But if you want just something very simple and easy, you don't need to use both. You can buy just one and you will still get a really fun and interesting little pedal. But I think that having two in one is gonna be so much cooler. There are a couple of things we have to do to it to make it work for us. For example, you have a volume control right here and we are gonna remove it. That's what I've already done to this one right here. And we're gonna recycle the pot and make it into a speed knob instead because I think that the volume is meaningless in a pedal. Obviously this is not made to be a guitar pedal but now that we're recycling it and using it as guitar pedal, the volume control doesn't really do anything. Because you have your guitar signal go through uh, in true bypass and then you plug this in and you either have the option of having it at max and having your signal basically be untouched volume wise, or you can lower the signal. So I feel like it's not boosting it or lowering it. It's not trying to find a volume that works for whatever signal you're putting in. It's either you have the signal that your guitar originally have, or you have uh, less of it. So I'm gonna show you how I remove this and make this into just having this volume that it would have. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. If you have some reason for wanting to have a volume on this thing, uh, you can keep it. But I seriously don't feel there is a need. And in this video, we're only Gonna focus on two of these and putting them into a pedal enclosure. I have a pedal enclosure here that we're gonna reuse. It does have holes for two more controls, which we're not gonna use. So I'm gonna put a piece of tape over them for now uh, because I don't have any other boxes. And later at some point, maybe I'll put in like a boost pedal or something like that because I do think it's a good thing for a pedal to be able to control the volume but I think that it should be do you want the volume less or higher than your bypass signal not just do you want it lower so that's why I'm removing it because I don't think it's worth having uh, for me but yeah so we're gonna make it have two different speed controls which I think is gonna be cool and interesting and hopefully you'll agree with me that it is. So, we have to mod this a little bit to make it uh, work for us. Or at least I am going to have to do it to make it work for me. Some of these steps you could obviously jump around and skip. 
if you want to. Let's jump into it now, because I've already spoken too much. And uh, if you like this video, don't forget to press the like button and the subscribe button. And also write a comment below saying hi to Panda, because I know he's watching. And I know he's going to appreciate all the little cute messages you sent to him. Thanking him for helping me make a tutorial on how to make a super cheap, super easy, fun little pedal. So, um, do that. Okay, so while we're waiting for the soldering iron to heat up, uh, because we are going to use the soldering iron, we're going to do a little bit of things, there are a couple of things we can do. If you have clippers that you can use on these, you don't need to remove them, but I, um, I don't have any, so I'm going to remove these. And there are two ways. You can heat them up and pull them out and then replace them with cables, or you can actually wiggle these loose and pull them out. And I hope you can see what I'm doing. It might not. It's always hard to film. If you wiggle them a little bit, you can pull these out and just leave the pins like so. And now we have two pins and I hope you can see them. Like, don't put too much force into it and also just wiggle them a little bit like like so. That was probably the worst explanation I've ever done for anything. So the next thing we're going to do is right here, and I hope I can show you it and that you can see it, but right here we have three little dots of solder and it says SGG and right up by the S it says R27. We'll take our soldering iron and we'll just try to flick that resistor, this tiny little blob right next to it, away like so, and just remove it completely. That's the first step. That will change so that we don't have to use the speed that is set on this, but we can change the speed with a control knob. If you don't care about changing the speed, you don't have to do anything about this. And the same thing here with the volume. We are going to remove it. And if you look here, we have three pins on the back right here. And we're going to do this super easy for ourselves. We're going to make a tiny little mark here and a tiny little mark here. Those two legs are going to be put together. And if you've seen any of my other videos, you know that I say stuff like when you cut off legs from resistors, keep them because you never know when you need to bridge something. That's what we're going to use this for. We're going to unsolder this. We're going to remove it and we are going to super quickly and easily just bridge those two leg connections and leave the third one alone. So I'll be back once I've done it. You can use a solder sucker to heat this up and pull them out or you can use your soldering iron and try to heat it up. If one of the legs break or something like that bad happens, which happened to me on this one, you can use one of those legs that I just showed you as a bridge connection for the broken connection. But try to do this so that nothing breaks. Okay, so I accidentally broke the connection for the pins to go into again. Both of these I did that on. So I'm just gonna saw that in place right there. And then I'm just gonna try to press this down in place and bend it so that it gets connected over there and cut this down to size just because I don't want it going in all directions and I'm sorry that it's super hard for me to film what I'm doing but I hope you can see that I'm just disordering a leg between those two connections there and it's not that um there's nothing special that you necessarily have to to see, but obviously if it's something you've never heard of before, then uh, I understand if it's confusing. But a circuit board or a PCB is just, you know, it's just the, the connections between parts without having to have, uh, you know, a bunch of wires boggled up everywhere. So if one of those connections in the board, you can see these lines here, for example, if they get broken, you can actually just do a real connection. I hope that makes sense. 
And now I'm just going to bend these legs down a little bit, just so that they lie flat, so that I have space for something else. Something like that. And I'm going to put some solder on them, just so it becomes easier to solder other things. And now we're going to take this one right here, and we're going to fix this up so that they will work together. And this is where changing things around a little bit this is where you'll have to ask yourself if you want to do these things, or maybe not. First, just going to remove the pot from the other one, because I only had it there to see if I could do something fun with it. But now that I know I can, I'm going to just put it to the side. I think putting these like this is a good idea. I don't know really if it is, but I think it is. And that's because I want to make this as small as possible so that I can make it fit inside of a pedal enclosure. If I put these like this, they will circuit out. So I need to have something in between. And the best and easiest way to do it, or maybe not the best way, I don't know. Sorry. And the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to put some regular insulation tape, the kind that we put on all our electronics. I'm going to put that on these. And I hope you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to put tape like this and I'm going to put the same on the other one just to keep them looking somewhat neat. Okay, so to keep them a little bit elevated from each other, I'm actually going to put some spacers in between. So I have a piece of a lollipop stick that I've cut down a little bit and I'm just going to try to line it up in a way so that it gets sandwiched in between. And I'm going to put some zip ties into it. This is basically just because I want to make sure that this fits into the box. There is probably a, someone out there who has a better idea for how to do this, but I'm sipping two and then I have two left. So if I want to screw it down, I can go and I'm not going to pull on these and make them like super snug. I just want to see if I can maybe keep things somewhat tight and organized and maybe even keeping them from shorting out on each other. Now we can go over to the soldering parts. I'm going to remove this one and we're going to take this one. And we're going to see if we can cut it in half, because I don't think we're going to need longer wires. So this one's in, and that will be the in for the guitar. So I'm going to make a little black mark on it. Now I know. And then this is going to be the out, but it's going to go to the other ones in. So here, we're just going to take our soldering iron and melt them together. And then we're going to take this one, strip it back, which means cutting away the plastic for any of you beginners. And we're going to pre-tin it, which means putting solder on the dip. This one will come in, come out, and go in here. And that's just enough wire to make this happen. So something like that. I hope this makes some sort of sense. But basically, the guitar is going to go in here, and come out here, and go in here, and then it's going to come out here. And this out is going to be the actual out to the pedal to basically go into the amp. So we just need to make a connection here. The next thing we need to do is just two ground connections. This input here will have a ground here. I have all these pre-made cables on music ding. And I'm just going to pre-tin and put one right here. And I'm going to pre-tin one and put it right here on the out. So that we have one ground that can go to the output jack and one ground that can go to the input jack. Just like this. And then we need a ground wire to connect these two. Now I'm just going to tin that wire right there. Before I do anything else, I'm going to pull it round and I'm going to solder it in place. And I know my hands are in the way, but I still haven't found a good way to film these sorts of things. But basically now we have a ground wire here that connects the two boards, just like so. And we also have two wires coming off. Now the next thing is the pots. Before I just connected them like this, but this whole thing, you know, first of all, they're on opposite sides. So you would have one pot here and one pot here and it would be weird. But I also want to make sure that I make it fit in here. So uh, we're going to have jumper cables. That's what we're going to do. It's the only way to do this. There is nothing really to it more than uh, soldering some wires in place. And it actually doesn't even matter, I've realized. If the pot goes on like that, or if the pot goes on like that. So, we're not going to focus too much on that, because it doesn't seem to really matter what you do with that. Or at least it, it doesn't matter for me. Obviously, you might have, for some weird reason, some other thing going for you than what I have for me. Now, I'm going to use these wires because I have them. 
and I'm going to sort them in place and then I'm going to cut them off halfway and use the other half on the other side. Okay, so the wires are all in place for the control and it might look like a lot of wires and woo, how am I going to handle this? But it's fairly easy. The three from the other one are being pulled to the side and now we're just going to attach these and we're just going to, yeah, we're just going to go in a row basically. So the first one gets connected to the first leg and hopefully it will actually stick. And then we're just going to jump over to the second leg for the middle, basically. Something like that. And then we just take the next one. And it's a good idea maybe to flip them over because you might sort them opposite directions and have one that speeds up by going to the left and one that speeds up by going to the right. And that could be interesting to have, but it could also be confusing. But as long as the middle is the middle, it doesn't really matter. There we have it. Two knobs going to this. And now I'm just going to take this thing and open it up and add all the parts that needs to go into it. And then we'll talk about soldering it to a switch and a bypass and a LED and all of that. Okay, so everything's been mounted inside of the pedal the way it's supposed to go. I'm just going to push a wire in here to this thing and tighten it down so that we have our power plus. And I'm using this wire on both like a loop so that I can cut it in the middle and solder in place. And I'm doing the same thing with this ground wire. And just so that you know that I did it, I also pre-tinned them. And that's just because sometimes when you clamp down with these sorts of things, I'm not really a fan of these clamp things. Sometimes when you use those, you will uh, just squish the wires in all directions. And then you wonder why you can't get a great, nice connection. So I have those two and we can pull them back here and we're just gonna leave them for now. I'll put this on them to hold them out of the way. Let's start with the switch down here first. It needs just a jumper furthest down connection. And I've already shown you all of this, so if you feel like I'm skipping, I've already done a video on how to solder a true bypass switch. So if you need more details about that, you can watch that one if you are new here. So I'm just taking one of these little legs that I've cut off, and I'm just going to use that as the jumper, which I know some of you are going to say is going to short out on something. And yes, it, they, it has that possibility, but I'm not really worried about that happening for me. But if you're unsure in your pedal and where you've put stuff, if that's a possibility, then use a bit of wire instead that has the protective plastic. But I feel like that's going to work for me. And this green wire here is too short, so I'm going to replace it with a new one and use that green wire somewhere else. Because this is the in, it needs to go up there. And so, pre-tin the wire, and we pre-tin the connection, and we push it in. And then we're taking this other green wire, and we're using that as the switch in. Pull it to the side, and over here to where the lead on the jack goes. And now we have that side connected. So, we need a tiny little jumper cable as well which we need to add now. And for that, we're going to have to use some uh, wire with shielding because it's going to get a little bit complicated otherwise. And we push it up to the same leg that we just worked on, like so. And then we loop it around to the middle leg on the last row. And we cut it down to size so that it fits. And we're going to strip this cable back. And we're going to pretin it. And we're going to pretin the connection as well and all of that cable in place like that so now one side is done and now we can move over to the next side no we can't we have to add this ground wire here as well like so and while we're at it we might as well do this ground wire as well so we just pretend it and we pretend this ground connection as well and now we have this outer cable and it is going to go there so we'll pull it to its place and cut it a little bit longer. Pre-tin and we pre-tin this connection, which is the last leg on the butt. And since that's melted together, we can use this wire. We cut off and made it a little bit shorter to go to the jack. Now we just need to take this cable and solder this cable to the jack. And here we have most of it. I hope you can see what I'm doing. We're not completely done yet. 
but uh, before we attach this little LED that I hope you can see the legs of right there let's just finish up here first we have two wires coming off here that are going to be the ground so let's just cut this off and strip both of these two wires off so we can sort them in place with each other and I know I say it all the time sorry that my hands are so much in the way but hopefully you can hear what I'm saying and you follow along that way this is not any different than anything else that I've ever done so if you've seen my pedal video where I made a one dollar fuss then uh, you've already seen all of these steps really nothing different and then we have our DC jack here and as you probably already know at least you should know if you've seen all my other videos and hint 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 the bigger leg is for the ground and the last leg that is not the middle is for the two red cables and now we should have power to the pedal and everything should work we also have an LED that we are going to add to get some light when uh, the thing is turned on. And that's just because I know someone is going to say that they would like to add that feature. We have one leg here that is a ground and we have one leg here that is the positive. And we need a little bit of wire. Now I've run out of black wire it seems. So I'm going to use this blue wire here as my ground wire so you're not confused. But maybe it will actually help. So the ground wire gets connected to the minus leg. And then it's getting pulled all the way through the entire pedal. All the way up here to where the DC connection is. And it's just soldered together with the other ones. From the DC where we just connected the two, um, the two positives. We're going to add this yellow cable. Because I've run out of red cables too. We're adding this cable right here. And it's going to get pulled all the way to the switch. And there isn't much point in cutting this down to size because it's so little that we need to cut. But I'm going to do it anyway. We're going to connect it to the first row middle leg. So we pre-tin it and push it in. And now what we need is a resistor. And I, I have one of these boxes that you can get. They're actually for uh, Arduinos, I think. And uh, we're going to find a resistor and put one in and here I have 3.3 uh, usually you will see someone use 2.2 uh, but I'm gonna go with 3.3 for now and see what happens now here is the issue it needs to be connected in that middle leg and that's a sensitive place to put it because it might um, touch something that it's not supposed to touch so if we take some of the wire that we cut off we can pull pull out all the wire and leaves us with a tube that we can push over this like so and now we can sort of this place and now it's in place and we can just push this wire into place like so and we can uh, take this uh, resistor and we can bend it over where it's supposed to go just try to line them up so that they go together and solder it together the positive goes to the resistor I'm not sure if I told you guys. Something like that. So there it is, the switch. It works pretty easy, you could say. If you think of my hand here as the middle row, uh, by pressing it, you select which row you want to connect to the middle row. So when it's in true bypass, it's just going to go through this little cable here. And when the pedal is selected, this green wire will be connected to this upper row and go all the way through and come back out into this yellow here go down here and go to the jack well there you have it here's the pedal now just gonna put some knobs on it and then we can go and listen to it i'm gonna take uh just a second to draw a little panda on top of it because we need to have that and then we're gonna listen to it thanks so much for watching and i hope you really liked the video if something was on shore talk to me in the comments below and don't forget to press the like button the subscribe button and yeah do that until next time stay awesome and cool and go and build this weird crazy thing um yeah do that i said do it do it now